Yes, one way in which we can unify both left and right. And I've said this, I think I gave a talk about this um, in, uh, when was it? I think it was 2018. No, it's got to be longer than that. But, it, you know, I think it was, it was uh, anyway, about five, six, seven years ago. And what I thought would unify left and right around a banner of authoritarianism, unify the nationalists, the religionists, and the leftists, I think the thing that will unify them and can unify them and make authoritarianism a reality in America, and I think you're starting to see it on the right, is a combination of religion, nationalism, and environmentalism. The time to really get scared, the time to really... The time when nationalism is basically just around the corner. Is when you'll see the nationalists on the right adopt the language of the environmentalists of the left. About nature, they will use it differently. They will say, um, Wanda Freeman says environmentalism dying. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. And, and yes, it might subside, just like religion is not dying. They might subside because other things come to the forefront, but they will pop back in. And think about, think about that God has left the environment in our, uh, we are custodials of the environment. And that's what God's mission to us. That's how the, the religionists would bring it in. Or couldn't America lead the green revolution in the world? and structured around some nationalist agenda. So if we can combine religion, nationalism, and environmentalism, that is the winning strategy for an authoritarian. And I can see that among these national conservatives. I can see them succumbing to the idea of environmentalism, particularly if it gets them more votes, particularly if they can structure the argument properly. So to me, the unity of left and right under the banner of nationalism and environmentalism is the real authoritarian nightmare to come. I mean, Jennifer says, is that what Tucker does? Yeah, I think Tucker, in a sense, does it. He unifies the left's hatred of finance, hatred of Wall Street, hatred of private equity, hatred of the rich with the religiosity and the nationalism. And I could see Tucker becoming an environmentalist. I can see Tucker arguing that we should take global warming seriously. I can see Tucker arguing that America should lead in the battle against global warming. I can see Tucker argue that the right should take this issue away from the left and make it their own. And remember, the, the, the Nazis were, wrote a lot about nature and about the environment and about man's place. And I mean, fascism and environmentalism went historically hand in hand. So, I, I, you know, I don't think... Yeah, Tucker's hated by a lot of Trump supporters right now because, you know, Tucker questions this, you know, this whole election scam thing. I mean, good for Tucker. He's got enough head on his shoulders to realize that that is a, not like some of the people in the chat, that that is a losing strategy, that supporting Trump on this one is not going to help his cause. But you will see a conservative case for type of Green New Deal. Oh, somebody says that already exists in American Magazine. New American Magazine has the conservative case for Green New Deal. Yeah, I'm not surprised. So I believe that authoritarianism will come to America around an integrating principle. The integrating principle most likely is a combination of nationalism and religion. It is also even more likely, or, or at least more likely to be successful, 
if they can find a way to integrate the principle around nationalism, religion, and environmentalism. And if you combine that with a charismatic fighter who will stand up to the left, like Trump did, but even more so and in more intelligent ways, I think America's ready. I think America is not far from giving a stamp of approval. Now, I, 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 uh, somewhat that is mitigated by the response here in Orange County and other places to the lockdowns. There's still a spirit of individualism. There's still a spirit of fight left in Americans. So maybe they will resist for longer. But there is a danger in the next 20 years that that combination of factors leads us. I, you know, while I hate Black Lives Matter and critical race theory and postmodernism and defund the police and all of that, I just don't think it's a governing ideology. I don't think they can win. I don't think they'll take over. I mean, at the edges, they may chip away at some stuff. I'm much more worried about Green New Deal because I think the right will support it ultimately, particularly if, let's say, temperatures start rising or there's a few storms in bad places and bad times. Oh, he says, go to Texas. But Texas, Texas might not adopt the environmentalism, although I'm not sure it won't. But Texas will jump on the nationalism and the religion. I mean, don't go to Texas if you ever hope to get an abortion. So I view the right as more dangerous. And I view the right as revealed by Donald Trump is more dangerous. I view the right as set up by Donald Trump as more dangerous. Ed asks, Yaron, how about environmentalism? I just talked about environmentalism uh, and, and maybe he's behind. I mean, I, again, I think environmentalism, if it's merged into the right and the right kind of right-wing politicians can do it, if it's merged into the right, it can become a ruling ideology, a dominant ideology. So that's my reasons for thinking that the right is more dangerous, to thinking that the right is more consistent with the M2, the misintegration that Lena Peikoff identifies in the dim hypothesis, and that the left, far left, is much more reminiscent of the D2, in the dim hypothesis, in spite of the fact that it's authoritarian, in spite of the fact you know, all those things, D2 does not exclude authoritarianism, but it's not, does not have an integrating principle and therefore cannot sustain power. Even if it gains it, it will lose it. And it will, it, it, it disintegrates. Look at Portland. You've got a leftist mayor and, and look at the Black Lives Matter in Portland. It's completely disintegrated. Now there are protests in Portland about uh, gentrification. Tomorrow there'll be, there'll, be, um, there'll be demonstrations in Portland about something else. There's no cohesive movement. There's just fragments. There's just opposition. We hate stuff. We hate everything. That's not a governing ideology. That's not an integrating ideology. And that cannot bring sustained long-term power, dominance in a culture. Black Lives Matter, I just read an article today about Black Lives Matter. It's fragmenting. Everybody's turning against each other because it stands for nothing really. It just is motivated by hate, hate for the system, hate for capitalism, hate for, uh, you know, whatever my uh, 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 color skin is, 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 is appropriate to hate at that point in time. It just stands for little groups, disintegrated groups, all you know, going after each other. Critical race theory is just set up to self-destruct. It is set up for everybody to hate everybody. You can't build a governing ideology around a set of ideas that basically motivate everybody to hate everybody. Intersectionality is the consequence of critical race theory. What's intersectionality? It's all these little groups and who's more, uh, uh, you know, more oppressed than the other group. And it splinters all the time. Everything is a splinter. Are you LGBTQ+, and which one of those letters are you? Because they probably don't have discrimination at the same level. For example, if you're lesbian or, or homosexual, if you're homosexual right now, 
that's mainstream. But if you're trans, oh, that's very oppressed. So even within the LGBTQ, some are more oppressed than others. So therefore, they're separate groups. It's a, if a different grouping, right? And then what color skin are you and how pure is that color skin? And are you female or are you male? Or are you one of 92 different genders? If there's anything that would suggest to you the complete and utter disintegration, disintegration of the left, it's the fact that they believe that there are 90 genders. That is completely disintegrated. Again, cannot be a governing ideology. What's the unifying principle? What's the thing to get excited about? Gender number 73? So you've got 92 genders, then you've got 93 ethnic groups, then you've got, you know, there's no end to it. Complete disintegration. And a disintegrated philosophy cannot win. It can destroy. It can create havoc. It can be nasty for a long time, but it cannot win. It cannot sustain, cannot gain and sustain political power. So I, I think the far left in that sense is impotent. It's incredibly dangerous and incredibly horrific and evil and destructive. But they can't win politically. I know that's hard for you guys because I hate the left. I despise the left. I despise everything they stand for. I'm talking about particularly the far left, right? Everything. I mean, intersectionalities, evil idea. It's a horrific idea. And all of that, critical race theory, postmodernism, egalitarianism. I talked early on about egalitarianism, how evil it is. All right. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there. Help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>